Hi, in this video we're going to talk about the OSIRIS webhook feature and how you create webhooks in ASP.NET Web API. Because of the nature of webhooks, you can really create them in any language and any web framework you want. But Web API is unique in that there is new packages available to simplify the process of implementing OSIRIS webhooks. So to begin, we've created a simple ASP.NET Web API project. So the first thing you need to do is go to the properties of your project and ensure that the .NET Framework target is at least .NET Framework 4.6. So once you've done that, the next thing you need to do is to go to your NuGet packages and install the OSIRIS NuGet package. And you can search for this in the Browse section of the NuGet Package Manager. The OSIRIS Windows package is the one you want, so simply install that into your project. So this NuGet package contains functions for receiving OSIRIS conversation invocations from the dynamic OSIRIS invoker. Because we're using ASP.NET Web API and because of OSIRIS' integration into the Orion Identity Management System, it is possible to simplify the authentication requirements of your Web API webhook. Simply type in Orion in the Browse section and select the Orion.WebAPI NuGet package and install that as well. So now we've installed all the required NuGet packages and we're ready to go. So for anyone that's familiar with WebAPI, simply create a new ASP.NET WebAPI controller. Select WebAPI to controller empty and select add and give your controller a name. And for this, we're going to call it a demo controller. So now we have this new controller that we're going to create our webhook endpoint on. So to start, we're going to create a simple one So the, um, the webhook uh, endpoint needs to be a post endpoint, and it takes in a script context object that is available in the Osiris Windows NuGet package that we installed earlier. So we're just going to say post test, and it's going to take in a script context from the Osiris Windows .nt .script, uh, namespace context. And it's that simple. So the webhook is expecting to return an OK result upon completion. So we're going to just put this in here now as a placeholder. We'll simply return this.ok. So we need to add a few attributes to the top of this function. So the first one we need to add is the root attribute. Now, depending on how you've implemented Web API, you may have your root logic done in a separate area. But just for this simple demo, we're going to do the root logic directly above the function. In this case, it's going to be API forward slash demo forward slash test. So this will be the API endpoint that will be called when this function is to be invoked. So because we we use the Orion uh, Identity Management Platform and because of the new packages available with Web API, we can simplify the authentication logic required to get the user that's calling the conversation web M webhook endpoint using the external key filter available in that NuGet package. So the Orion Windows Web API dot filter external key filter is what you want here. And this takes a number of parameters. It takes a public key, a secret key, an organizational public key, and it is optional Boolean. We'll talk a little about those in a second. But what the public key and secret key is, is the system account public key and secret key for the application that you've registered on the Orion website. So here you see I have an Orion account that I've created and I've logged in. I've also registered an organization and you can see here that I've registered an application called webhook demo that we're going to use in the Osiris system. So simply go to manage webhook and you'll see we currently have no system accounts so simply create one. And now we have a new system account and we have a public key and a secret key. Before we can actually use this with Osiris we have to grant Osiris context permission. So hit the grant permission section and enter IUI which is Osiris's application ID. You'll then get a request to grant permission to Osiris, simply grant permission. And now the system account can be used for conversations. So taking this public key and secret key, we're going to put them in a file called constants. Basically, we'll put the secret key in here. This is the public key, sorry. The secret key is this guy here. The public key for the application is this guy here and is optional means do we want to allow this function to be invoked without an Orion authorization header being sent and in this case we do not so we set false 
So in a production environment, you would never hard code the um, credentials like this at the top of the function, and you'd have them in a file or in a, in a um, config file somewhere. But just for the purposes of this demo, to simplify um, the demo, it makes sense in this case. So how we actually, with using the external key filter, you access the user by doing the following. So you can go var user equals I Orion principal user. So it's really that simple. So that user object, this guy here, will have all the information about the user that's calling it because of the external key filter that we've applied. And what we're going to do here is we're going to send back a very simple response saying that we received your message and we'll tailor it to the name of the user. And to do this, we do the following. So we call await new webhook A controller, we need to pass in a new Orion context, I'm sorry, a new Osiris context, excuse me, and we call send webhook response, which is what sends a response back to the Osiris service, which is a result. So it requires a script context, which is the context that you were sent, and it also requires a generated result. So we'll create a new script result. And the script results require two parameters, an Orion key and a string script response. Now this is the exact same logic that we use in the conversation router tutorial. So if you want more information about this particular part of the code, you should look at that tutorial, which goes into it in far more detail. So the Orion key is available in your context dot Orion verification key. And the script response is what you want the user to see when you respond back. So for us, we're going to just say a very, very simple hello there. And we're going to include the name of the user. So we can go user dot user dot first name. So in two lines of code basically we were able to create a simple webhook that tailored a message back to the user and all the authentication of that user is handled by the external key filter automatically. So now we have our webhook and we're going to deploy this webhook to Azure and I've already created a published profile to do this for me. So while that's deploying let's go to Osiris. So we need to go to the developer portal and we need to edit the webhook demo uh, developer portal. So in order to register a webhook into your service service, we need to go to the script manager and we need to add a new script. So we're going to call this demo webhook. For language, you can select either. So the language requirement for selection of a script was a previous requirement for conversation routers because conversation routers were deployed in a specific environment and they ran a particular type of script. So you can select any here because webhooks can be used with conversation routers. They both can be used in tandem. So you can select the language that you think you might use a conversation router for in the future, or you can just select a language if you don't plan to use them. You can select any of the languages. So I'm just going to select C Sharp here and a Windows environment. Again, the environment is not relevant for webhooks because webhooks are uh, based on just HTTP web servers. So they're not relevant in this decision. So create the script. So here you have your demo script. So now you need to go into manage builds and this is where you create your webhook. So you'll see you to select a script provider. You have Amazon S3 and local file system. That's what we used for conversation router scripts. But you see now there's a webhook endpoint provider. Select this one. Give a version name. So in this case we're going to say 1.0 and a webhook endpoint. So this is the endpoint that we're going to use for our API. So you'll see here if we go to this um, to this uh, site here, which is what we just published. This is our API. So our API was at API forward slash test forward slash, uh, just to double check, it was um, API demo test. So we just need to grab that and append that to the end of our ASP.NET web API. And this is our endpoint. So we simply set that here and create a build. And now we have this build webhook, we make it active. And now this is the active webhook for that script. The next step is to actually create nodes that take advantage of that script. To do that, we need to go into the node network builder. And from previous videos, you will know that the node network builder is how we build and architect our conversations within the Osiris system. So we're gonna start by creating an entry node, and it's gonna be just a basic entry node. Just call it basic entry node. A description, we can just put in anything here. Expected input will be hello. So this is what we expect the user to say 
when they're typing in the conversational dialogue. An example of user input will be hello. We want So the acceptance threshold is how close of a match what the user says uh, to what we expect and what they actually give. So we're going to set this to 80% and we'll set the learning threshold to 70%. The learning threshold is the number that we want to prompt the user to ask them, is this what they wanted if we're not entirely sure. We want to show it examples, and it is a start node because the start node is the starting point of a conversation, which this is. So we sit yes, and we save the changes. You'll now see that we have our entry node here in our node network visualizer. Next, we need to create a dynamic action node. Dynamic action nodes are what we in, what invoke the dynamic invocation system, and they work with both the conversation router framework and the webhook framework. So simply, we're going to call it sample action. Any description. Loading method will be uh, one moment. And include start nodes means that when this action is finished, we can loop back around to start node conversations. So we're going to save that. And now we have our dynamic action node, which are color-coded red, and our entry node that is color-coded green. We now need to connect a connection between them, so create node connection dialog. Double-click the green one, double-click the red one, establish a connection between them. So now they are joined together. The next step we need to do is attach a script to the node. To do this, we go back to our script manager and grab the script ID that we created earlier. We then attach script, we provide the script ID, and we provide the node ID of the action node, which is this one here. We provide that, and we establish a connection. So now you'll see we have a, a um, conversational tree appearing. This is the entry node. This is the action which will invoke our webhook endpoint. It really is that simple. So now we have created a very, very simple conversation that we can have in the OSIRIS framework. So we need to go to the conversation portal, and we've already subscribed to webhook demo. So let's start the conversation. Now if I say hello. One moment. Hello there, Shane. So you see how simple that was. With that tiny bit of code that we have here, we replied back with hello there, Shane. Because of the authentication requirements, it knows who I am, and the response time is incredibly fast as well. So let's make the conversation script a little bit more interesting. How about we we um we tailor the script a little bit more? So we can say I can see that your email, or let's say um, your second name is, and you can see here all the information you have about the user. So we're just going to say uh, surname, save, and you can see that the changes will be applied immediately. So let's publish that. And as soon as that's published, we can ask that question again, and you'll see that the webhook will have the same result. Wait for the deployment to finish. One moment. Hello there, Shane. I can see that your second name is Craven. So you see, that's a very simple example of how the new webhook framework works within the Osiris Intelligent User Interface platform. It is important to note, again, that the webhooks work in tandem with the conversation router framework. So if you have existing conversation router scripts, you can use them the same way as you use the webhooks within the same conversation script. So thank you very, very much for watching. If you have any more questions, you can email me at shanecraven at, or excuse me, at shane Shane7218 at shanecraven.info or contact at shanecraven.info. Thanks very much for watching.